So I came across a video the other day where a content creator basically stated that we shouldn't be using cat at the command line. We should just be using grip instead of cat. My thinking is why are we using cat or grip or sid or head or any of that stuff when we can just use awk for everything? That's our topic for the day. So let me pull up a terminal. So let's start with cat. Most people use cat just to print out the output of a file at the command line. So if I did cat space and then the name of a file, I have a file in my home directory here called new.sh. It just prints out that file right here in the terminal. That's kind of neat. Now, if you wanted to search for something in a file, of course, you would use grip. So I could grip, uh, you know what, let's grip for the hashtag symbol and new.sh and it will print out every line that has a hashtag in it. Now, an incorrect way to actually grip something is to actually invoke cat first, so cat new.sh, and then use the pipe symbol, and then grip the hash symbol. So you could do that. You get the exact same output, but why use cat when cat is pointless in that? A lot of people do that, but again, because grip itself will just pull those lines, why even bother with cat? You're, it's basically duplicating work, right? You don't need cat to cat out the lines if grip is going to spit out all the lines for you anyway. So get rid of the bloat. Quit using cat when you're searching for something. But you know what? Also, why bother with grip? Grip is kind of a neat program, but it really only does one thing. It searches for text. It doesn't replace text. It's not... It's not really any kind of uh, stream editor like Sid, and it's not a, its own programming language, almost like Awk is. So it, it's completely different than Sid and Awk. You know, Grip can't add or modify or remove anything. All it does is search for something in a file. So let's discuss Awk really quickly. Awk, again, it's more of almost like its own programming language. Technically, it's a text pattern scanning and processing language. It was created by three guys. Their names were Aho, Weinberger, and Kernigan. A-W-K, AWK. AWK is mostly used, or traditionally was mostly used for data extraction and reporting, especially CSV files. Today, we can do all kinds of stuff with AWK, though. Pretty much the sky's the limit, but typically, if I wanted to, I mean, I could replace practically most of your typical common command line utilities with something like awk. For example, if I wanted to cat something instead of cat name a file, I could awk and then in quotes, I could do quotes and curly brackets, print dollar symbol zero, dollar symbol zero means the whole line. And basically there's your cat. So why bother with cat when you can just awk? So that is the awk equivalent of cat. What about grip? Well, you can do basically an awk equivalent of grip with awk space and then in quotes. And then let's also include a slash. And then what are we searching for? And you know what? Let's search for the hashtag. Then we'll give it another slash. And then, of course, the name of file, new.sh. And we just basically, that was the grip equivalent there in awk. So Again, why bother with cat? And if I wanted to grip something else other than the hashtag, I'd just go back here. Uh, I know I've got a line that has a variable called my directory, you know, so I could awk that out, basically grip it with awk. Now where awk really shines in ways that something like grip and cat and things like that can only dream of is when you, you know, need more fine-tuned control over the text you're searching for. For example, in this command here, what I'm doing is that dollar symbol one you see, I'm searching for the first field. If the first field contains, and again, we're searching for the hashtag. If the first field is the hashtag, I want you to print the second column, and then of course the name of the file, new.sh, and that's how that would work. Now, that, that may be confusing. Let's go back and print out the whole document again. This is the awk equivalent to cat here. And you see every line that had the hashtag, we found that, and then we printed the second column of that line, which is usually the first uh, pipe symbol <laughs> in the ASCII art. That's why some of this looks weird. And then the word this was also because we searched for that hashtag, and then the second column of that line was the word this. Let me clear the screen there. I mean, if I wanted to, I, we could have searched for anything. I know there's a if and else if statement somewhere in that script. Let's search for 
the line where the first field is elif, and then I want you to print, I don't know, how about the fourth column? And there you go. And if I basically printed out the whole document again, again, you see that it finds the line that starts with elif, this line here, and it prints the fourth column, which is one, two, three, four, directory choice, that variable right there. One thing we should mention about what I just did with the two equal signs, the dollar symbol one, first field, has to equal precisely elif. Now, if you, if it doesn't need to match it exactly, if the first field just needs to contain like a word, then instead of the dollar symbol, you would do the little tilde character. So in this command, you know, again, it's very similar, but we replace the two equal signs with the little squiggly tilde character, where the first field doesn't have to be exactly elif. You know, it could be a much a longer word as long as it contains elif within that word. And of course, it still prints out the same information because those two commands basically are going to return the same thing. But if I had changed that to something a little fuzzier, like how about D-I-R, you know, then it finds every line that contains D-I-R, whether it's the entire word or just part of the word, and then prints out the fourth column of that line. And a similar variation on this is in front of the little tilde character, we could put a exclamation point. And basically what this does, it runs the same command, but this time, it finds every line that does not contain D-I-R in it and prints out the fourth column, which is most of the file, actually. I don't want to throw too much at you with all, but I mean, you can do a lot with it. I'm sure you guys can already see uh, standard commands with all, such as this right here, is I want you to print out the first uh, column and the fourth column of new.sh. So there you go. We get the very first column and then we get the fourth column from each line. But well, we're getting a little bit off track. Basically I wanted to show you how alt can re replace cat and grep and I also mentioned we probably could replace most everything else. Things like head and said. For example, head. If you wanted to get the first ten lines of a particular document you could head space new dot sh you know for the name of the file it gives me the the head the header the first 10 lines of that file now you could do something similar with said a popular meme is said 11q new dot sh gives me exactly the same information but i could do the same with awk i could awk all right so this command here it's a little more lengthy but it's pretty straightforward it's basically, of course, invoking awk, and then you use nr, which the nr stands for, it's a variable for number of records. And then you see the number of records, we'll basically want 0 through 11, right? We want to print out basically 10 lines. I did 0 through 11. We want that to print out. Uh, what document are we wanting to print from? Of course, we're using new.sh again. Hit that, and basically, it's the exact same thing as head, name of document, or said 11q, name of document, but why use those, again, when you can just awk. Now, I know some of you guys are going to say, well, there's one thing that grip makes a lot easier to do than things like said, and especially things like awk, and that is searching for something case insensitively, meaning, you know, whether it's capitalized, lowercase, what have you. For example, typically with grip, you would do grip space dash i, for case insensitive, and then your search term. I'm going to search for dir again, because dir in my script, there are different instances of it. Some of them are lowercase, some of them are capitalized, but I want to search for all of it, whether it's lowercase, capital, whatever, and then of course name a document. So that's typically how you would do that in grip, but it's actually not that hard to search for case insensitivity in either said or all. Now, let, let's go ahead and throw said in here. So typically for said, you would do something like said space, single quotes, and then slash. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the brackets. I'm going to do an opening bracket and then capital D, lowercase d, closing bracket. So find every instance of a word that starts with either a capital D or a lowercase d, and then IR. The slash again, and then the exclamation, and then D, and then the closing single quotes. And then the name of the document, new.sh in my case. And basically it does the exact same thing as grep-i. Now, awk, it makes this a little simpler. Awk, you just need to awk, single quotes, two lower. Then in parentheses, dollar symbol zero, 
space, the tilde character again, space, then inside slashes, D-I-R, then in the trailing single quote, and then the name of the document, new.sh. Hit enter. You have the awk equivalent of grep-i. So there you have it. If you're going to be an autist and not use cat, and you know, not use grip, and then, you know, just go full autist and just use awk as much as possible. Before I go, I want to thank a few special people. This show was made possible by Alex, Ansem, Chris, Daniel, David, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplow, Corbinian, Lambda, Liam, Mitchell, Natek, Rob, Robert, Sean, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. These guys are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about replacing practically everything known to man with just Alk, this show wouldn't have been possible. Also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen. If you'd like to support the channel, Please do so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.